There we go. And, and, yep, there we go. And muted. Okay, there we go. <laughs> well, that was the trailer. I had the trailer accidentally muted, um, which we'll see again shortly. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the first of a month-long celebration of all things gaming, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, uh, that we're getting together with Wes Johnson once again for Voice of Palooza 2023 for an amazing cause, the Alzheimer's Association. How you doing, Wes? Here we are. I'm doing great. I'm Year very two. excited. Year, Year two. two. We're exhausted already, Ken. Uh, we've we got so many things that have been planned. We've got so many surprises coming up for folks. It's... Uh, so many people want to help this year. We have so many streamers around the globe uh, who are joining in this battle against Alzheimer's. We have so many voice actors who are like, hey, let us help. Let us jump in and let us do something. I mean, this is a despicable disease that has affected so many people, so many families. And what's great about what we're doing here with you at Fallout for Hope and with Voice of Palooza is we're having fun for funds. We're going to raise money, we're going to drop the gloves, and we're going to sock one to Alzheimer's. And in the meantime, we're going to do it with a month-long celebration of gaming, of, of Bethesda, of Skyrim, of, of the Elder Scrolls, Fallout, uh, so many other games. We have just so many surprises in store for you. I'm very excited. Yeah, as am I. Um, for this very first stream, we've, we've got something a little special planned. So last year, for the very first time, we started to take a look at the modding side of the community uh, that very much keeps the spirit of the games that we love alive, recreating and expanding on the worlds that we've, we've kind of grown up and loved, the worlds of Bethesda, Zenimax, um, most appropriately of which... We're going to talk a little bit about Morrowind, and we're joined uh, by oh, yes. by some very special people today. In addition to Wes, we're joined by Elizabeth Noon and David Dubois, both original cast members of uh, voice, voicing uh, Morrowind. They're now, what, 20, 26 years ago? I was just I was, yesterday. I was four. Me too, right? We were all so much younger then. <laughs> It was it was grand, but you know what? The fact of the matter is, with voice actors, we can still play the young parts. Why? I, it, it's only it, it's only in video games and voice work that I can have six pack abs. <laughs> Liz, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, some of the roles that you did back in Morrowind in the very beginning, and. Um, Bit, you know, it, yeah. it's like really going back in time, that's for damn sure. But um, what we were talking about before is that the sessions were so, they were so creative. And, and you know, it was before there were so many games. I mean, this was all, this was relatively new. So the development of your character was so important. And you, you got, um, you got time to um, I think with the elders and, and the, the Argonian females and the Ark females, you established a personality about them. You know, even with that gargantuous size and the, and the, the visual part of them, they still res, uh, resonated as a person. If you well, will. you were so method, Elizabeth, that it, it took almost a year for you to get those lizardy scales off. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and there's so much to pick at, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was just such it was such fun and and um and it was a lot of hard work, as everybody knows who's who's in it for hours. You know, you you you're hoping you still have a voice after it. But, and Oh, yes. Something that we were talking about before the stream got started, I didn't know. So you said that uh, Todd Howard himself voice directed you for that one. Yeah, yeah. Todd was there in the studios. Wow. We did it at absolute pitch. Uh, Chip Ellinghouse was our engineer at the time. And uh, we would go into those rooms and we'd, we'd talk to them about, uh, you know, ask Todd, what do you think of this character? Uh, wh where would we go with this? And he'd tell us about it. He'd show us some some sheets of some characters and give us an idea. Right. Now, the only person I saw when I was doing the Bretons was uh, Socia Sergala. And uh, I, I was like, Socius. And I'm like, well, you know, 
every character I'm playing is going to be bald with a white goatee. That's basically uh, <laughs> how that goes. So I played all the Bretons pretty much that way. We were back in the day when we're doing all of the, uh, the races were very simple. They were all a similar voice. So if you're an Argonian, you all sounded the same. If you were Bretons, you all sounded the same. Imperials, all the same. Basically, there's a whole lot of inbreeding in Morrowind at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Wes. But you know, with with that being said, I remember still feeling a very definitive personality with the mm-hmm. characters. Mm-hmm. You know, well, yeah, and, and, and depending upon who they not, were, yeah. You know, well, how many different uh, races did you play? I mean, I know that I played a number of the different. Uh, I played Daedric princes. I played, uh, yeah, you know, was some orcs. I was, uh, I was uh, the Bretons in that game, and uh, uh, there were occasionally a few people running around who sounded like Sean Connery, who were also me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but I have to say voicing Morrowind was very interesting in that, as you said, Elizabeth, the only games I'd done before that was uh, a thing called Unreal 2, where basically the only thing I did in that game was die. They brought me in to basically be the embodiment of a Wilhelm scream and die for four hours in like 200 different ways. You know, okay, Wes, you're going to get your throat cut. Now you're getting something caught in a zipper. Now you're doing this, all these different screams of pain. And so this, I got to dive into characters and actually, you know, have emotions, things of that sort. Yeah, that's but, that's what yeah. I that's what I was really and and which still resonates with me today is that we were building Todd would help us do that too. Mm-hmm. We would talk about the moments that these characters were having. It just wasn't, you know, <clears throat> you know, no. just yeah. that it was it was really an understanding of what the scenes were. I mean, it sounds mm-hmm. kind of funny, but but um I think that's what made this whole series live today because it was it helped so you get immersed you, you became immersed in the world right you yes, became you immersed did. in the story and the characters and it it's sort of uh it, it's very it's similar to stage similar to film similar to things is that you have to actually embody a character but it's it's a, a completely different creature as well the one thing I remember having to be careful was that I didn't knock the microphone across the room. You know, when you're in these scenes, you have to still, you know, be very careful. You're not taking the microphone and throwing it across the room because you're using. I remember this was the first time that um, and I, I hadn't really done um, anywhere near this kind of depth of character. And I remember that, you you know, the body use was something that um, I was yeah doing things where I was much more contained. So, I discovered when you smack the microphone around, the engineers get really butthurt. Oh, they really, yeah. <laughs> it was like, Elizabeth, you know, I know, I think you liked me. Could you like it? <laughs> and uh, also at the end here is David Boy. How are you, David? I'm fine. How are you all doing? <laughs> Good. <laughs> David, so who did you voice in Morrowind? Well, I started video games in 94 in something called death gate i played somebody named haplo and had a big binder in front of me and really didn't know how the game went but then those days it was pretty early going and so i just sort of uh, you know played this one character as as the director thought would work best and then a mere nine years later i was asked to come back and work again and uh, that was uh, the elder scrolls morrowind and they hired me because they wanted somebody with great variety of character because I was playing the entire male Altmer's race. Wow, Every is... Altmer who walked on on the screen was me, but there were a lot of different ones. So <laughs> I got to uh, play a lot of different ones. And uh, I believe my best line was go that way. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if I remember with those correct. thrilling stuff. <laughs> well, but the, but the fun part was, is that, I had to make them all sound different, have different character, depending upon what the scene was like. So that that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And now we're actually, uh, we're going to take a dive down into Team Skywind. Um, Skywind is a really incredibly ambitious mod that is in development that is bringing and recreating Morrowind in the Skyrim engine. 
And uh, for all of you, the originals here, is it weird that here we are almost, you know, quarter of a century later, that gamers still very much connect with your game and enough to to want to recreate it for a new generation? It's as close to uh, being able to go see a, a Rocky Horror Picture Show performance of your performance that we'll ever get to. I'm just hoping that when you guys are voicing this stuff and performing this stuff, you're also throwing around toast and spraying bottles and... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> knocking over microphones some good yeah. acting notes there was. Um, let's uh so take let's take a look here so uh let's go in order here so daniel hodge how are you i'm doing good so what uh what do you do for for skywind for skywind i narrate the development videos um i think i'm playing some side characters maybe some daedric princes uh nothing too grand just yet that i've voiced for but um, I've been with the project kind of since it was in the development stage back on the original Skywind website. And Wes, this is that Daniel Hodge, is it not? I know. No, it is. Let me tell you something, Daniel. Every single... Because we can't do mods. We're not allowed to do mods uh, because we do the actual games and we're union. And it's, but, but I think that the mods are a great training ground. I was just talking with somebody yep. the other day over at Bethesda about this. The mods are great training grounds. It's almost like a uh, college, you know, where, and then there's a draft and a lot of people who are developers and voice people who have done these mods, they end up getting hired by the game companies. Why? Because this is a great chance for them to get out and show their wares, show their craft, show what they can do. It takes just as much effort and dedication and talent to make a mod as it does to make the game. So where do you go to find the talent of tomorrow? You go to the people who are creating the mods. And I've been watching Daniel, uh, listening to Daniel really for a while now, because when they couldn't get a Shea Gorath or they couldn't get an Imperial Guard or they couldn't get this, Daniel was jumping in and he was doing, uh, you know, a pretty decent impression of me. And I remember reaching out to you at one point, Daniel, after listening to your stuff. And I said, you know, you're doing a great job with this. But what I am impressed with is how you're able to develop the characters and there's emotion and there's a real life within them. And at some point, and I think that you've actually surpassed that and done that. Don't be in my shadow. I want you to be doing your characters. You should be doing your characters because one of these days people are going to be saying, I need to get me a Daniel Hodge type. And, uh, you know, I, I think that you, you had mentioned something before we went on about how you're saying one of these days you'll be a professional voice actor. Let me tell you something, buddy. You're already a voice actor. You're working. You are working. You're working towards it. And you're going to get these jobs. And you're going to be a member with us in the union. You're going to be doing all these things. You just have to be of the mindset that I am a voice actor. And all the mods... And all the developers and all the writers have to be of a mindset of, I am a video game developer. I am a video game writer. You don't do these things thinking, thinking I'm going to be or I want to be because you're doing the work. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Wes. Uh, two quick things. Uh, firstly, we have now passed $5,000 raised so far. We just passed that mark. And, That's amazing. Uh, I missed the notification here, but... Uh, the Skywind team actually just donated three hundred dollars wow. to, to the oh. ALZ. That seriously, <laughs> thank you guys. That's thank you wonderful. Guys. That is just amazing. And Munchie, thank you for the donation. Uh, Twenty dollar anonymous donation. Thank you all so very much. That is fantastic. Go, go team Skywind. Um, and sorry to uh, King Cole is next up on the list in, in a very interesting mess. What a reveal. <laughs> Greetings. I am the bold King Cole. I have a merry old soul. I'm actually one of the voice actors for uh, for the project. I voice act the I voice act uh, a variety of orcs and a and I think I uh, got some opportunities to voice some Khajiit. A lot of people usually don't uh, think this type of voice is able to be flexible. But 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 they always get surprised when I go from something like this <clears throat> to something sounding something more like this. Do not steal. 
Do not kill your kin. Do not attack without cause. Those who break these rules must pay the blood price. And, and then they got something like this. Do something, something more like this. You cannot grasp this simple truth. And I, because uh, has proper wares, if you have the coin. That is really good. Oh. <laughs> Excellent, nice. bravo. Yeah. Why well, I, I actually had to bra- train myself when I was uh, I actually trained myself when I was ju- but, but a kid. It was I was actually inspired by Frank Welker uh, for his wide variety of voice acting when I was a kid. I practiced a lot with mimicry and learning a large range of what I'm able to do. So yeah, impressions, as you mentioned, is a good stepping stone of knowing your range. Yeah. And, and over the time, I sometimes you discover a new, new point in your voice that you just absolutely love and actually start to explore more with. I mean, you heard my voice as the orc, but that was actually somewhat inspired by... Uh, anyone here familiar with the Superman, the animated series? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The guy who did the voice of Lobo. Coincidentally enough, I used to be part of a voice acting group called Adrenaline Dubs. I'm not with them anymore. I wanted to uh, try to expand on my own thing. And well, I, I was with them for five years and I, I love them all, but I just have to spread my wings, you know. But anyway, the, uh, the, uh, it was actually through uh, through exploring some stuff with certain characters that I, I can actually sell like this, baby. <laughs> they don't ever expect this. And then all these other things I also got to do with going from this. Try starting something more like this, like Long John Ball Three. But yeah, but but I imagine. But yeah, if you have any questions regarding to uh, Skywind, uh, let me know. Yeah, we'll dive into that. Uh, also, Anna, how are you, Anna? Hi, I'm doing great. What do you do for Team Skywind? Um, so I've been a part of Skywind for the past almost three years now, and I voice act. Um, I voice act Bosmer, Dunmer, Imperials, and Khajiit. And on top of that, I also am a writer for the project. Awesome. Uh, sorry, is it Renara? Renara, yeah. I got it. Yay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Uh, I, I Hello. am a, uh, I'm, I've, I'm a voice actor for Skywind. I've been with the project since about 2016. I've seen it through, so similar to John, um, not John. Um, God, I'm, I'm doing that thing where you get all flustered. So I'm going to do my best. Uh, Daniel, oh, you're sorry. doing great. You're doing I'm great. I'm doing fine. Uh, <laughs> no, I've been on a sort of a similar length to Daniel on this project. I've seen it through many different phases and stuff. I voice uh, primarily Dunma, but I do a bit of Imperial and some Argonian as well. So you can hear me as Breach Star in the newest demo as well. It's like, this one said nothing, please. Awesome. There you go. Uh, and switching down next row, Ryan Cooper. How are you, Ryan? I'm very well, sir. How are you? Good. So what do you do on, good, good. Uh, on Skywind? Uh, well, I'm a voice actor again, if you can believe it. Uh, I joined about 2015. Um, I've got about 15 characters under my belt so far. Um, I did um, Dagoth Endus and General Darius. Uh, do they get uncomfortable under uh, there? you'll be here all week i'm sure um yes and apart from that i'm also the developer diary commentator for sky oblivion so i'm dan hodge's blood brother on the other side of the aisle there another very 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 cool mod in development yes very good uh and is it zix yeah you got it hey what's up how are you? What, uh, so what do you Pretty do good. on Skywind? Uh, I'm actually not a voice actor. Whoa, crazy, I know. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I'm currently at least the role of 3D lead um, awesome. uh, alongside some other minor stuff, um, sort of managing the 3D team. That's pretty much all I do right now. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm mainly here to answer things in case voice actors can't. <laughs> what you guys and will see that in could the be trailer. many things yeah. yeah yeah the trailer the new stuff you guys will see all the 3d work these i've been working on it's amazing it's transformed the game the meshes and what it looks like to re to like uh revitalize and re-envision the way that morwen looked since 
way way back when when the first game came out so that that's a whole lot of work games. do you ever yeah. get out of the house <laughs> me personally very rarely it's funny you ask that <laughs> but uh yeah it is a lot of work it, really we have a large team so uh very grateful to those guys they make it pretty easy on me at trying to manage them all very luckily so and i can't wait to uh to dive into the the gameplay that you've released so far it's really beautiful stuff uh kate how are you I'm great. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I'm another voice actor. Um, I just came on board just a couple months ago, actually. Um, I, I've been doing a lot of theater acting for the last like decade, but voice acting's always been on my mind, and I love Skyrim, and I've always wanted to be an elf, and I took uh, Wes Johnson's voiceover for video games class, which is amazing for it anyone is. who's watching and <laughs> wants to take it. Taking it twice. Just plugging it right there. Um, but yeah, I took it, and uh, Skywind was auditioning during that time, and uh, I'm just so excited. I'm I'm playing female Dunmer, so I get to live my elf dreams, uh, and it's been amazing so far. <laughs> just I like learning. I you auditioning during class and going in and doing this stuff and being very excited. What's interesting is that uh, all of the students from the class have created this discord and they all get on and share ideas and share auditions. And it's just like squad, you know, which I love. Yeah, everyone's really supportive in that discord. It's great. Like accountability buddies kind of thing going on, you know, so it's it's been awesome. Thank you, Wes. <laughs> Thank and you. Whoever just donated the twenty dollars anonymously, much love to you. Thank you for that. Um, moving over to UCM. Hello, how's everyone doing? Good. Great. Uh, so yeah, I'm also not a voice actor. I'm uh, one of the level designers uh, in the video that uh, you're gonna see. Thank you. Uh, yeah, don't worry, everyone. My voice is not in the game. We're you're safe. <laughs> um, but oh, in the uh, oh stop. But keep going. <laughs> but uh, in the video that you're going to see, I uh, was responsible for the uh, the Necromancer's Tower of Mawaya. I love doing dungeons. I um, got into this when uh, um, you know the lockdown started, and I couldn't get my D and D sort of jollies of messing with players. So I decided to turn it into a virtual messing with players. Awesome. Uh, and nice. Joanna. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm Joanna, aka Lee, on the team. Um, I am also one of the level designers for the video. You will see some of my work in um, Molek Mar, uh, but I have to mention that uh, Zix and, uh, sorry, Zix, of course, did the 3D stuff, but uh, Nick and Mel also did work in Molag Mar. Um, I got into the team also during the lockdown period, and I've been really enjoying doing um, interiors and lived spaces more. Uh, I went to school for anthropology and archaeology, so I like to translate some of that, like looking at how people live and explore experience these spaces into uh, game worlds and virtual spaces. That is so, awesome. Yeah. Uh, and Next up, Rhetoran. Last but not least, uh, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Two bit mad. Yes, how can I help you, <laughs> <laughs> sir? Ooh. This is a Wendy's. <laughs> um, Matt, so so, what exactly do you do? And that is one hell of a mask. Thank you, thank you. Uh, oh my God. Worked on this for me. Uh, I didn't want to copy elder memes by just wearing a vault boy mask, <laughs> so decided to go with the appropriate Morwen <laughs> theme and wear the ordinator helmet. Awesome. Uh, but what I do is I am one of the writing co-leads, uh, so I help write dialogue, uh, get things from Morrowind updated for voice acting for Skywind, and uh, kind of act as a lore guide and general answers person where needed. Very cool. Uh, so that is our panel. Now, before we dive in here, um, Egrets from the Skyrim team, uh, Skywind team, had uh, a challenge for us all. And we're going to play a quick game to loosen you up here before we, we dive into some gameplay. And uh, we'll start with our voice actors and go right through here. And it's time to do a little impressions. Hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, and boy. these are going to be uh, iconic uh, Morrowind lines. And 
I'm going to challenge you to do them in a very particular way. So let's spin the dice here and see what we got. Um, so Wes, do an impression of this Morrowind line. Why walk when you can ride? We make a special trip just for you. Same low price. In the following style of Elvis Presley or Dolly Parton. <laughs> well, say, man, uh, why walk when you can ride? We got one low price for the rest of the line, which I, I just can't remember, man, because I'm real, real high. <laughs> 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 fantastic uh liz uh yeah. sa same line as uh elvis presley or dolly parton why walk when we can ride we make a, st a special trip just why for walk when we can ride we make a special trip just for whoever the hell it was that you said <laughs> <laughs> but I, I i just do believe that we 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 offer a very special ride <laughs> David Du Bois, Elvis Presley, or Dolly make, make me follow that. Okay, <laughs> <clears throat> throw it at me. Go ahead. What am I doing? Why walk when we can ride? We make a special trip just for you. Same low price. A any particular voice in, in, uh, in Elvis in Presley or Dolly Parton? <laughs> Uh, how about if I do Elvis Presley impersonating Dolly Parton? Will that work? <laughs> yes. Ooh, yes. Nice. Give us. Let's why, why walk? Why walk when you can? Because I'm very confused. Why walk when you can? What? I can do this. I'm an adult. Wait a minute. Hold on. You got it. You got this. You got this. I get, yeah, cheer me on, Wes. Why? Why walk when you can ride? I can. I got a '57 Buick out here that I can drive you around in if you want it. Please you know what? That go to someone else. That was a dead-on Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> that was great. Good improv. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, <laughs> all right so now we're going to jump down rows here, uh, starting with Daniel. Uh, do a Morrowind impression of this line. What a fool you are. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. How could you be so naive? Uh, <laughs> also in the style of Elvis Presley or Dolly Parton. <laughs> Oh, let's see here. <laughs> what a fool you are. <laughs> I'm a god. <laughs> I'm a god. What a grand, intoxicating innocence. <laughs> I don't, I can't remember the rest of it. <laughs> That's okay. That's perfect. Um, King Cole, same line. What a fool you are. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. How could you be so naive? Elvis Presley or Dolly Parton? Hmm. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> what, a what a fool you are. I'm a god. <laughs> How you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Anna. Thank you very much. Oh, Thank God. you. Elvis um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to will the spirit of Dolly to possess me right now because my <laughs> um, southern accent is not the best, but oh, go perfect. for it. Two bit Matt coming in clutch. She just posted exactly what the lines are in chat here. Oh my God. Well, oh, that my helps God. a lot putting them in words. Yeah. 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 I can't <laughs> copy and paste from the chat. <laughs> Where were you when I needed you? <laughs> okay. I'm hoping you I got this, Anna. Win. Center okay. and center and what center. a fool you are. oh god no i am the god i'm just i am the god I, i'm just n never mind we'll just move on <laughs> no, you, you got this you got this come on how can you we believe in you you got I'm this go don't it Oh, honey, you can do it. I am a god you can, how can you, you kill a god you can do this what a grand and intoxicating innocence how naive <laughs> perfect renara Oh boy, here we go. Right. I'm, I'm English, so I, I get a pass for this being probably very stereotypical, okay? <laughs> oh, what a fool you are. I'm a god. How can you how can you kill a god? Oh god, this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> what a grand intoxicating innocence. How could you be so naive? Fantastic. That is the that is the best you're getting currently. You gotta you gotta bring it out in song, guys. Be like, yeah. what a fool you what are. What a fool yeah. you are. I am a fool God. Of God. How, How could you be God. so naive, what baby? A fool. Not a uh, song. Trust me, everybody, we Ooh. are voice actors. We're just we yeah, we are. We're very professional. <laughs> and we're very weird. 
Yes. <laughs> oh. oh no. Uh, is there a question? Can I do that line of Dick Arthur as, as Long John Baldry's Dr. Robotnik voice? <laughs> I think everyone will take a huge laugh at this one. May I? Briefly, yes, and then we have to move on. Okay. <clears throat> what a fool you are. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. How can you be so naive? I have the I have the power of the Chaos Emerald Hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Now, if you could quote that exactly like that while <laughs> sitting on the Metro bus, you'll have a seat all to yourself. <laughs> what? I have to eat scenery. Scenery is delicious. <laughs> Ryan Cooper. Uh, so switching down, uh, I spun the dice. So this Morrowind line, I don't recall using teleportation, and yet there I was, alone, naked. In the following style or accent of a Morrowind Nord Scottish. Oh, this should be easy for you. You got oh, this. Oh, what? Nord Scottish? Uh, Morrowind Nord Scottish. Nord or Scottish? Uh, it just says Morrowind <laughs> Nord slash Scottish. So okay. Right. Say a lot again. I've got the memory of a goldfish. I don't what? recall using teleportation, and yet there I was, alone, naked. Right. I'll just Google it because my memory is terrible. Oh, it's in chat now. Hey, there you go. Two bit Matt coming in clutch. Yeah. Okay. I don't recall using teleportation yet. There I was, alone, naked. Got <laughs> Rec has entered the chat. Sorry. No. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Zix. You got this. You're going to make me do this? <laughs> Oh, you bet. Oh, yeah. oh wow. You yeah. joined the voice of Palooza. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what I got myself into. Yeah. Um, Let's go. Same Zach. line, same accent. Is that same yeah, line, yeah. same accent. You got it. Everyone's cheering you on in chat. Let's all let's all start pounding. Everyone smash Zix in chat. Uh, pray to somebody. I we guess. need a summoning uh, circle. Uh, I shit. Uh, you need to pray to God. But, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't recall using teleportation, yet there I was alone. Oh, come on, make it happen. Was that the right accent? I don't even know if I got the right accent. No, that was, that good. was beautiful. That yeah. was great. Oh, no, keep going. Yeah. Okay, that was some good voice acting. Y yippee! I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There's zixing all over the place in chat. <laughs> We've achieved zix off in chat. <laughs> oh God, uh, Kate. Okay, so still Scottish? Is that that's yep. Scottish? Moral okay. Engineer, it's Scottish. Okay. I don't recall using teleportation and yet there I was alone, naked. <laughs> that's Irish, sorry. <laughs> so I was just in Ireland. That's why that happened. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, it's Celtic. It's it, the Red General region. You're it's good. fine. It's fine. <laughs> Apologies in advance to everyone living in Scotland. Um, <laughs> UCM. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can do it. You can do this. We believe in you. I don't recall you. <laughs> God, it's kind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall using teleportation, but there I was, alone, naked. <laughs> it sounded like Ringo Starr. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall using teleportation. And we, <laughs> and we lost you, Seattle. Don't, don't look at me. <laughs> Ringo, put your clothes back on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, last one here. Bottom row. Um, we're going to spin the dice again. And uh, okay, Anna, we've got, I could kill that guar. Those boots are ruined. In the following style or accent of Ashlander, Eastern European or Ashlander, Eastern European. Okay. I got to redeem right. myself. Okay. Let's think. Um, are getting hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> I could kill that guar. Those boots are ruined. Oh God, I don't even know what that was. That was something. <laughs> not bad, but it was something, but it that was, was nice. good. Yeah, it was, yeah. We're not Trying to emulate, them. you know, my grandma's weird <laughs> English from, you know, growing up. <sighs> I remember when my grandma used to say that. <laughs> yeah, I could kill that guar. <laughs> okay, two bit Matt, dialing in from a 1996 McDonald's intercom, uh, same line. Let's hear it. I could kill that guar. Those boots are ruined. 
<laughs> Perfect. The torture is complete. Um, now we're going to uh, finally, at last, we're going to dive into some gameplay here. Um, before we do, we got a quick, um, just a little reminder here about what we are doing this for from Alzheimer's. Um, and then two other quick things of business before we dive in. Um, exclamation point Noble Chairs. So our good, amazing friends at Noble Chairs are sponsoring Wes Johnson this year again. Uh, Thank and you, guys. We are giving away a 619 US dollar valued premium uh, Noble Chairs Hero Elder Scrolls Online Edition chair uh, that Wes has. And it is a beautiful mm. black chair that has runes. <laughs> uh, really lovely stuff. Uh, that Blends is right into the background. It does, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. Oh. That's what we're talking about. See the mm. runes. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's in the noble chair, just a throne. It, this is this is <laughs> like is, the uh, most amazing chair. The thing is, they they look really cool, but even more importantly than that, they're super comfortable and uh, great to to sit in like all day long. So you want this chair? You want this chair? And he keeps it in the bathroom. So I'm just saying. There's a. Mm. I have carved a hole into the bottom of it. That's all you know. That's a little too much information, but thank you, Wes. <laughs> well, it is a noble chair and a throne. Oh. <laughs> what a lovely image on a Friday evening. Um, one other piece of business here, uh, explaining a little bit more about what the Alzheimer's Association is. Uh, we don't yeah. run any commercials on this channel, uh, so I want you to take a quick look at this, and then uh, we'll come back, and I want to show you how beautiful Skywind looks so far. The first person to survive Alzheimer's disease is out there. They're going to hold on to everything the disease steals away. That smile they can't hide. The dance class they love. Every single piece of them is going to make it through. And the Alzheimer's Association is going to make it happen by funding research, advancing public policy, and spurring scientific breakthroughs and by providing local support to those living with the disease and their caregivers, we're easing the burden for all those facing it until we accomplish our goal. Alzheimer's disease has devastated millions of lives, but that's all going to change when we reach the first survivor. But we won't get there without you. Join the fight with the Alzheimer's Association. And we're back. Um, yeah, a little bit about the Alzheimer's Association. Both um, this cause is very near and dear to both Wes and I, um, as it is to many, many people who unfortunately have had people robbed from us by this terrible disease. I lost my. You uh, lose people before you lose them, Ken. Yes, yeah, my grandmother and great grandmother, and uh, my dad now diagnosed. So. Oh, I'm sorry, Ken. Yeah, uh, I lost my my grandmother, my mother, my uncle. Uh, my brother just lost his uh, mother-in-law. I mean. It's a terrible thing that happens to the people as their memories fade and, and we lose who they are. They lose who they are. But it's worse for the families and the caretakers and the people who love them, who are there, who become the keeper of their memory, but also have to deal with the Alzheimer's and the dementia and the changes in personality. And it's just a very rough ride. And because of the Alzheimer's Association uh, they're there 24 7 they're around you can go to alz.org they've got an 800 line that you can call and we'll get that number for you later on uh, that you can call 24 7 and get help somebody who understands someone who can help guide you because just as those who have alzheimer's and dementia seem to be lost for themselves if you're caring for someone like that you can be lost. And the Alzheimer's Association not only helps families, but they're working very hard right now to try to find a cure. They've got medications that are actually in stages now that can, can push Alzheimer's back. But now they have to fight the red tape of the government and the uh, FDA and things of that sort to get <clears throat> these things approved and get them into the hands of the people who need them. So what we're doing here by having fun and having a great time and with all these panels all month long is also going to be helping people. So fun for funds and we're dropping the gloves on Alzheimer's and for all of you who've donated here today, and will be donating all this month. I can't thank you enough. Yes. Yeah, speaking of um, coming back to this. So D uh, sorry, B Boltzmann. Thank you very much for the $50 donation. Very much appreciated. 
dberg820 thank you for that 20 dollars donation uh 25 dollars anonymous donation thank you Thorello 12 with a 20 dollars donation um argyle 20 dollars and liz liz with a hundred dollar donation thank you liz, oh, liz. it's lovely Thank you. Yeah, right now the Alzheimer's Association is is fighting in Washington to get the drugs that can actually help people with this disease passed through and covered by Medicaid. And uh, as usual, it's some red tape bullshittery. So we need to to That's offer the them official a little bit term. Of help. <laughs> mm. So now let's uh, let's dive into some gameplay here. I'm really excited to take a look and show you all. I'm going to switch over here. Perfect. And now for everyone here on the panel, you should be able to take a look on the screen now. And uh, does someone actually want to, uh, from the team, want to take a little bit and explain where we are as far as the trailer uh, and what we're looking at now? Sure. Uh, I'd be happy to do so. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, so yeah, this is the uh, quest uh, Necromancer in Mawia, which is a uh, temple quest from uh, Morrowind. Uh, so right now we're walking through an ash storm in uh, to Molagmar, a sort of fortress city that's uh, near the south of the island. Um, I think this might be one of the first times we've really shown off an ash storm. I know we've uh, people have been asking about the weather a lot in uh, Skywind, so I'm happy to happy to say that you know we do have the dreary, grim weather that uh, people love to go back to uh, in Morrowind. God, At least I hope they like. This looks great. Why? Why am I not seeing? Why am I only seeing the panel? What am I doing wrong? Oh, Liz. Uh, so the hang on. Let me drop the LinkedIn chat for you. Yeah, I don't. I don't see it. That's okay. Doo -doo. Let's get Liz hooked up here. There we go. Uh, nope, that was Just everyone. On, I, that was, I accidentally sent that to two bit Matt. Hang on. There we go. There you go, Liz. Thank you. Yeah, and that'll bring you to the stream. You'll be able to see. What this is a uh, beautiful stuff. Now, who's responsible for building these worlds? Wow. A lot of people. <laughs> it takes a team. Very so specific. Zix did the tile set pieces in this room. Uh, someone who's not here named Mel did some concept art. I wow. put the interior bits together. Uh, nice. Nick added some extra bits of decor. Um, yeah, so this was my main role in contributing to the video was the architecture section here. Oh, uh, are you doing a screen share in the uh, in the Zoom thing? Nope, not in the Zoom. Uh, so there's a link right in chat, so you can take a look at it on stream. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> just it's just that uh, there's the bit of the echoing and such. So just, just wanna... mute it. Just mute it. Don't worry. Let's yeah. uh, focus on what there we're seeing is. here. <laughs> there it is. There we go. Okay. Well, is that beautiful? Is it not like the good old days? <laughs> yeah, talk about um, a little bit about that that iconic gravelly Dunmer growl, the Jeff uh, Baker growl. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that it, that it was dropped in uh, Oblivion. <laughs> well, you know, one of the you reasons it was dropped in Oblivion was because. To the people. Sorry, in uh, Liz. Oh. On your stream, make sure you mute that. Red Bull gives you wings. Oh. <laughs> I can't. Oh, not in Zoom. Yeah. Uh, so there's a link right in chat, so you can take a look at it on stream. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, and I was just, it's just that uh, uh, there's the bit of the echoing and such. So just, yeah, just, just be just muted. Yeah. 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 There there yeah. yeah there there's a Liz. There's a volume control right on the video there. Just turn that. Oh, that's beautiful. Why can't I mute that? Are you here to serve the yep. Down on the bottom left of the screw, the picture. Yep, bottom left. Let's there, now I get Dunmer Jesus. Growl. The, uh, yeah, the Dunmer Growl uh, with Jeff Baker. He went with that throat voice, which was can be very damaging over time. It's a very intensive voice. And uh, he had, what, like 14 sessions of doing this. And after a while, it's like he had no voice left. So uh, it was... Uh, the kind of thing where they're like, well, maybe, maybe we should spare the actors a little bit, but it was beautiful to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. 
and look for an you know who could do that growl all day is Mike Rossin, who we're going to be meeting with uh, tomorrow uh, for a live event over in Springfield at Toshi Station. It'll be That's gonna 3 be awesome. p.m. right here. What about um, the context voice, act voice actors are given for their lines um, to help them find the character and mood? Um, for everyone here, that, that kind of question, um, how, how do you um inhabit the characters that you're reprising do you try and, and do a complete impersonation of what was done before or do you'd like to do a little bit of a twist on it make it your own who'd like to go first i don't mind um, <clears throat> well um yeah I, I, you know even if you know because uh in the bethesda games you know as you said you'd play an entire race by yourself but even then, you've got to try and carve out an individual niche for each character. Um, that guy there was me, and he's, uh, you know, very much a religious sort of zealot, uh, which is different to the other characters. So he's very performative, very, you know, very sneering and uh, sort of self-righteous, and that's, you know, that comes through from the script when you read it, and mm. that's kind of it, really. I'd agree on that front, because a lot of the times when we get the scripts through, you just have you have the line and as you're reading through they get blocked into scenes so you have one line after the other and from that scene you start to get an idea because they have the name of the character the sort of long sort of scene bit that you're doing and then they have uh basically uh you know the wheel of uh emotions in oblivion where you do like admire whatever and things like that we've got like Terrible. 50 100 25 <laughs> That, that but the mini game that was the bane of everyone's existence um but they have similar things to that next to each line to give you an idea of the intensity behind each line so it helps you it helps navigate that and then sometimes we'll have a pre-line for who might that might come from somebody else but we don't necessarily have the, an idea around the character we take context clues from the scripts that we're given and sometimes when you when you see that 100 anger or 100 sad you start okay that's the focal point of this scene so what do i need to look around the outside of that and sort of you work as you go sort of thing you start to get an idea of oh this person keeps getting lines talking about their son oh they must be a mother they're they're obviously concerned about where this son's going and you you sort of start to play off of that and if i'm ever having issues i always go to the writing team and go hey how's this said or what what's what's the context behind this and i ask because you in, you can mm -hmm. <laughs> in this in, in this because we're a huge this it's a huge team and everyone is just so Work, they, everyone works together wonderfully. All the departments are available to talk to, no matter where you are. And it's it's just the the communication that we have is ridiculous, in the best way possible. Yeah, um, a lot of it is definitely creativity, of course, because as much as you know our writing team, we go to great efforts to really flesh out each character. Um, the truth is, whenever you have, you know, thousands of NPCs, you can't give everyone the attention that, you know, they deserve. So whenever you're, you know, confronted with one of those, you know, classic Morwen lines that's kind of long and rambly and giving all this information, I mean, we've cleaned that sort of dialogue up so it reads more naturally. But still, at the end of the day, you're going to be given a lot of lines with all these complicated Dunmer names and places that you need to go to. And you just kind of need to do your best to infuse that life into it and kind of get into the headspace of where your sort of your character would be. Yeah, yeah. And even if I would imagine you're playing a character that has existed before that other people recognize, you still have to make it your own. You have to live that character from within yourself and find the motivation, find the... Uh, uh the the reasons for being within you so it's going to change it it's going to make it if you want to make it real it has to come from you to begin with yeah i know one of the things is is whenever we're confronted with all of the different num dunbar names for the different locations we're always in the chat like how do you pronounce yeah. this what the heck is this but for the character you know that's just a fact of their life it's like me telling someone to go walk to the tesco so you have to get into that yeah. attitude of you know i've known these places my whole life i've grown up with them and that really helps a lot you know earlier anna what you were talking about it was it's kind of fun there's a popular uh, little bit of, of lore as it relates to oblivion when patrick stewart was given a 90 page booklet for Oblivion explaining his character's history and motivations. He dies in the tutorial mission. 
gives you a little bit more info than you maybe need. Um, also, with uh, Oblivion West, the 13 actor main cast, they were given the lines in alphabetical order with not a lot Evidently, of. Evidently, I I didn't know this at the time. Yeah. It's something somebody told me. You're when you look at these scripts, there are these little blips that go through, and each one of them has a different emotion. I mean, you can go from happy to sad to fearful to uh, joy to love to hate like from line to line so you have to reset yourself every time going into the next line so to, to, to decide whether or not that was in alphabetical order was the farthest thing from my mind as I'm reading those yeah and it's interesting I don't think a lot of people know this I didn't know until I took your your acting class the scripts that you're given are not in like a regular script play if you're doing a radio play or a play or a TV film so it's sometimes hard for you to have context of a scene if you're just given that one line and you have to kind of come up with what's going on in your head with, you know, right. just some basic prompting. You can always ask the engineer if the engineer knows. The engineer might ask the uh, writer. Sometimes the writer is there, but other times the fact of the matter is whenever you're creating a character, you have to have an inner life and half of that inner life that you're making up for yourself uh, in order to make that character real. So... Uh, Liz and, and David, how do you feel about that? Well, what I was going to say is that many times in a situation like that, especially if it's just the engineer, uh, I'll suggest, let me give this line to you a couple of different ways and see which version plugs in best when you guys get into editing. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that helps a lot. You know, you know I... I, I Am I doing something? You're still not still muted on, on the. Uh, it says it's it, it says it's muted. Oh, sorry, Liz. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm yeah. starting to see echo trails as you're doing that. It's amazing. <laughs> it's uh, Liz. Just close the video where you're watching the stream because what's happening is uh, we're hearing that audio back through. So just close. Don't say the boomer. Don't say boomer. <laughs> yeah, just just keep yeah, just keep the zoom up. Don't close the zoom. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, Liz. Just close the uh, the video that you were watching. The there. Twitch, the Twitch page you yeah, were just watching on. Exit out yeah. of it. And then so, I uh, you you've oops, muted sorry. the zoom there, Liz, so we can't hear you anymore. Yeah, and then the zoom you can just unmute. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. There, there we, we go. Are. Yes. Okay. You know, what I was going to say with that is that it, it it's kind of what I was saying before. One of the things that was so unusual at that time be, because it was new for all the video games was to marry that character. You know, mm. you had to do that in order to um, take those emotions and go from one to another very quickly. You meant when when you'd be in battle, for an instance, as an Argonian female, um, you may be protective in one graph, and then the next one you're killing someone, and the next one you're defending someone. So you had to really have an idea of, and Anna, I could see you kind of shaking your head, like, yeah, you know, you have to really have an idea of the personality, the drive of this character to go from one thing to another, just like, a, like a, you know, a real person does. Yeah. I I have to act the character. I can't just voice it. No, you have to be I I, I feel like you you live the character. You become you know, you live in that world and yep. uh uh I actually felt after voicing Morrowind and then playing it for like 600 700 hours that when I started voicing Oblivion, I was much more immersed in the world and in the game. Uh, it, it helped me a lot. Oh, it much. Oh, really? It was, you know, you felt kind of like a newbie in the beginning of it. And that's where Todd was so wonderful. We had great direction. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then really later really on, you know, between Todd and then uh, Mark Lampert. And Mark and, uh, Lampert, right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, if I can just Who's jump directing in for Sky, Skywind? Who's, who's directing for you guys for your voice acting? Are you all directing yourselves? 
you know. To a degree, yeah. yeah, to a degree. We do have some voice acting leads that we can go to if we have any questions and things like that who can give us a bit of a nudge um, every now and then. But a lot of the sort of directed um, feedback we get is usually after we've had our lines cut and we have it back for retakes. The file cutters leave a lot of notes for us so that we can basically, if we've misread, if we've misread something or if the pauses are too long or everything, things like that, they give us notes both structurally and acting, which is so helpful. <laughs> Um, cause sometimes they'll say you've done a really good take, but you've taken, you've taken too much long of a pause here and we need to, we need to, you to retake it cause they don't want to edit mm. those bits and pieces and things like that. And it's just, yeah, that's the sort of things, what we get back and we sort of go from there and retake, retake can happen two or three or four times or our scripts could get rehauled, which happened once already. That's a story, but I don't think we've got time for that. <laughs> so when you're recording, you guys have your own individual booths. I see you have a booth there. I see Daniel has a booth. How do you guys, uh, what are your home studio setups like? And you're recording all around the world. And then are you sending this in just like with a uh, uh, Wii transfer or Hightail or Dropbox? What do you do? So uh, I personally use, uh, can I start? Okay. Um, I personally use um, Google Drive, so I just record it in Audacity and then upload it. But it's actually kind of funny because my recording studio is um, just a closet and I've set up a bunch of blankets and I literally am under just this giant, um, you know, I'm forgetting the word because language, um, just heavy blanket, you know, that you put the mattress. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so yeah you're deadening sitting your under space that. is important, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're holding it up and you're also trying to look at the script. But, you know, if you're determined enough, you can make anything work. And sorry, you, you see that? They, they call it a cludio. I call mine my cludio. I used to have yes. bathrooms and all this, you know, huge room. and bath Now I call it my cludio, which is my closet studio. So, <laughs> so, like you, you see, um, I'm sorry, you've been trying to jump in here for a minute. Yeah, I just want to show, like, with the video, one thing that we uh, were very happy you've been able to do is compared to the original game, create much more uh, dramatic scenes. Like in here, you can see a, a, uh, he blew up the staircase and is now fighting this, this enormous stitched together necromantic monstrosity. That is terrifying. Uh, glad you think so. <laughs> uh, but so yeah, like in the original game, you know, I, I think Delvum, the necromancer, didn't have any lines at all. You could maybe talk to him and he has some sort of canned responses out of the uh, just default dialogue, but here, you know, we've given him, been able to give him much more of a character, give him some much more dynamic um, movement. For example, you know, uh, we we're talking uh, voice acting uh, when we came in, but he uh, mocked the player from the uh, other side of a locked door, then ran upstairs, blew up the staircase, like I just mentioned, and just generally gave him a much more full character, made him much more of a coward and Panicky, sounds sort like of a terrible boring. house guest <laughs> oh he's terrible he's terrible he um leaves the toilet seat up i'm sure <laughs> and i but. remember when you you see him were designing that dungeon and working with dicks zix on can we do this uh exploding staircase op uh mm -hmm. idea that the voice acting the dialogue that was going to be in the game was very much directing how you were designing the dungeon as well i thought that was a really mm -hmm. cool kind of blend here that's a really good point we did have to uh go back to the dialogue that we had written and recorded and you know avoid mentioning you know if someone says go left you know we had to make them go left make the you know directions actually make sense with what was already spoken um but yeah so then i just wanted to point out that we've been able to with our voice cast been able to create much more interesting characters even when they're only around for five minutes like this necromancer is I do, I do like the uh, fact that the monstrosity had had twin guitars for fighting you. That's actually a personal favorite weapon of mine. You know, Indian punch daggers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easily. I'm not sure weapons. off the top of my head who designed the Greater Bone Walker, but he's one of my favorite designs we've come up with. Yeah, yeah. The, the weapon is just a, if you have a guitar for me, you automatically are an awesome character. And uh, thank you, Torque, and two anonymous donations for twenty dollars each coming in. Torque with that twenty dollars donation, thank you much. That's wonderful. We are thank at you. five thousand four hundred and seven dollars and twenty two cents, uh, closing on on six thousand, <laughs> and then we'll need to, to up the goal here. It's always good to up the goal. 
Always good to have Yeah, I, I, I'm always astonished by the gaming community. You guys rock. Thank you. What? I, uh, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to add because as a voice actor, we don't usually get to see a lot of the assets. So when these demos come out, it's really interesting to see one our our, our stuff implemented and sort of to see exactly where that character, what that character was, and how close we got it. But also, uh, I've been a fan of this series since I was. 12 and to see the sort of the creativity behind the different sort of um dwarven dwemer stuff and all these different things different reimagining i'm i'm just having a bit of a fan gush here currently don't worry <laughs> oh oh believe me since i was since i got introduced to the elder scrolls since oblivion getting the opportunity to do something like this is also kind of it's actually really nice since i've yeah. been doing all, i do, did a lot of mod stuff myself now mm -hmm. especially with uh some of the uh, older ideas that my friend told me about and showed me in regards to like uh, uh like the idea regarding to the uh, regarding to the uh, battle uh battle sphere or something what it, it, I do remember in lore, they talked about the fact that uh, that in the game they do have the ability of space travel and such. But uh, yeah, that was the whole state the synopsis of that game. Yeah, but, but yeah, I, I, yeah. So, so I saw some pretty cool concepts and everything else. <sighs> I gotta look for them again. Hmm. How Maybe much? Yeah. How much typical training um, does a Skyrim voice actor, a Skywind voice actor, need? Mm, that, that one actually that yeah. varies on that one's a various type of question some people is going to be uh, going to be just like that or some people have to get eased in and such and uh wes you were talking wes ellis uh, you were talking to, uh, about raspiness and such this is actually something i learned how to do uh, because of uh, because of my associate senior fatal uh, you know, uh, if anyone who knows who he is, the uh, guy who likes to be on his desk and make awesome cartoons. Uh, he actually, he was actually uh, in a Newgrounds podcast. He was talking about how he does a lot of his things. He mentioned that his friend told him that if he drinks milk, it actually protects your vocal cords yeah. from getting from getting severely damaged. To a degree. Yeah, yeah. Any any little bit helps. It uh, and uh, and since then, also, that's how I. It also builds up mucus, which is not necessarily yeah. always the first yes. person to survive. Yeah, I was going to say my disease is out yeah, there. Yeah, no, not always. So but sometimes, but sometimes it is. depending on the character, it could help out or it could hinder. But overall, any little bit helps. I, I've discovered that if you drink milk and shoot it out your nose, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's excruciatingly painful. That gave you brain damage was. You know, one thing I think is, is really important in voice acting, too, is that the breath carries the voice rather yeah. than the throat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, That's yes, right. the diaphragm. You, you can the really diaphragm. have the voice come from the diaphragm. You're taking all the pressure off of this right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, can, uh, you mm -hmm. can do the very guttural kind of, you know, things like that because they come from here, you know, the, the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my singing teacher, my singing teachers actually uh, uh, had to reteach me that one. I lost my voice uh, from singing back in middle school because I hit a note way too high up with my falsetto and I did it wrong and I wasn't able to speak for a long time and I was too afraid to sing again for uh, until I got back to college. And <laughs> thanks to my college professor to getting my courage back up. And you know, earlier we were talking about with Renara, it's. Um... It's a weird moment when, you know, the, these characters that you've been living with in your head and voicing to finally see them like that in gameplay. I imagine this the, it was the same case was for you all, Wes and Liz and David, when you finally saw what the characters look like on the screen after voicing them. Was there anything that surprised you? Uh, anything that you maybe thought, well, maybe I could have done that a little differently? Or, or what were your thoughts? I was mostly surprised in Oblivion when I saw how Lucian the Chance looked because he was completely different from what I was imagining. I was imagining some crooked, decrepit, gaunt Ooh. fellow with the long stringy hair and just evil. And then they put him in this like gorgeous body. And when we're like, oh my God, <laughs> he's gorgeous and has a heart of evil, the perfect man. Swole so, Lucian. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> but what I when I play the games and I listen to my voice back, I don't know about you guys, but I listen to hear how it, it, it the immersion works. Mm -hmm. Does it fit in? Does it does it work as part of the story? Yeah. I don't want it to stand out like a sore thumb in any way. I don't want it to become too different from everything i wanted to work as the story i want you to believe the character uh some of the worst things as far as gaming is concerned i think when it comes to voicing is when somebody is sounds reedy or stilted yeah. and it takes you out of the immersion of the moment you realize there's an actor there mm -hmm. uh that's why yeah. the voice becomes self-conscious of itself yeah yeah mm -hmm. It, it doesn't, and that, that I think is why the studying of acting is so important. Mm -hmm. you know, because bottom line is you're looking for somebody that you can relate to. Somebody, I don't care what the size is, still in the game, you want to be able to relate to that. Yeah, even if it's yeah. a creature, even if it's a monster or a creature, yeah. they have human emotions. Why? Because you're playing for a human audience and that's what they're going to identify with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Right. That's I prefer to memorize. Um, I prefer to memorize the script to avoid that read equality that you've mentioned because you have no choice but to, you know, imagine it rather than just read it off a piece of paper. Yeah, and just because a just because a character just happens to be a monstrosity or an animal doesn't necessarily mean you can't relate to them. And that's it, it's and that also goes alongside with writing as well. If you've like someone made this really bad take uh, saying how can they relate to the Hulk who is a giant green monster and I was just I was like just look at anybody in a car on the beltway and you can relate to that yeah. <laughs> I, I've never heard such a more dumbfounding thing in my entire life in regards to that it's literally Jekyll and Hyde you relate to David Banner don't you not, not so much the Hulk well, you, you can even, one. but even then, you can still relate to the Hulk regarding to yeah, the Hulk maybe its own separate entity, but you could also understand or in some aspects regarding to him. Yeah, but it's like uh, the dissection of Grendel. You actually n learn more about the monster uh, before the or before the. Uh, uh, just ran. Well, if yeah, I just sorry, saw Liz... Guardians of the Galaxy three last night, and uh, you truly believe mm -hmm. uh, that all of the animals, and especially Rocket Raccoon, are deeply human things that are going to make you cry so mm -hmm. yeah and liz you look like you're a good actor there. i've always asked myself if i'm going to die how would someone care about me i mean i have to have the character live something mm -hmm. that i can relate to so that when i die there's a, a feeling that i'm evoking with that you know so it's like the evolution of the character is really what i find fascinating this you know, is why people didn't go left and right in Morrowind and start turning all your characters into purses or boots. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I want Argodian purses and Khajiit coats. I look fabulous. So soft. Yeah, you do happen to play characters that just so happen to be, you know, the materials used for making purses and boots. So and, uh, oh. it, it really doesn't help that Morrowind is uh, regarding lore. <laughs> How uh how is the so the the style of voice acting how is it different for Skywind versus the other Elder Scrolls games? Um, I think because it's a, a throwback to the turn of the century, um, it's going to be a bit more colourful, a bit more. I'm not going to say cartoony, but I think that's a trend of modern acting. It's gone towards hyper realism, mm -hmm. and I think if by going back to to Morrowind, you're going to have a lot more flavor and obviously with with sky when there's about 300 actors which uh it automatically gives you that sort of diversity as well cast. good lord yeah i, I love, I love, I love the like term three, flavor so. a lot more yeah. than uh cartoon <laughs> <laughs> I do also yeah. think it's a bit of a time stamp for its time in the sense of it's a, it's a time capsule. It was the first game, I would say, that encapsulated D&D &D into a video game format, not counting Arena and Daggerfall because I wasn't alive for those. Um, <laughs> but it was it it was the first time we got to really play in Must as a, a fantasy race. And it was the, probably the first time, I don't know. I'm I'm doing that thing where I I do the same thing of, as King and kind of start rambling a bit. Um, I think the the reason being why it's yeah it's a time capsule. So the lines and the way it reads, having the writing team zhuzh it up a little bit just to make it seem, flow a bit easier. But I know there's a couple there's like a few lines that all of us have which we go yeah that's come straight from the game 
I think. Mm. Um, what's his name? Oh, um, oh, Glorious is. Oh, can, do you, I'm, I'm sure. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Oh I'm not the only one. Oh, Oren Bearclaw. <laughs> That every 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 character, all, all of us have come across that line. It's like, mm. oh, thunderous! It's Orin Bearclaw, yeah. and we're like, okay, we've got to figure this out here. And I, <laughs> it's. I just lean into it and just cheese it up. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, if I, I think another cheesy line, just embrace it. You know, <laughs> embrace it. I think another thing that's really cool with Skywind is we kind of go back to where each race has their own sort of characteristics and how they speak and and how yeah. they speak and approach things. So, I mean, it's not like every single character is voiced by the same person and they have the no. exact same approach to it, but they have mm. the same sort of general qualities. So, for instance, a Dunmer is very sort of up here and very bright and light. But in contrast, um, a Dunmer would be very sort of um, a dark sounding voice and like Absolutely. they go down and deep yes. and that... a little bit of the growl. And well, that's sucking kind of... so much ash down every day. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That was what I was about to mention as well. Because of the ash and such, it would cause uh, cause issues with with respiratory, like a smoker. And uh, smokers usually have a bit of a rasp to them. Yeah. Which mm. is why when you get the Tamriel, some of those dark elves sound perfectly fine. Exactly. You know, their, their lung doctors are like, good checkup today, bud. Good to go. <laughs> and you know, we've been talking a lot. Uh, we've been talking a lot about voice acting, but let's talk a little bit about about the world that we just saw here. Um, as far as level design goes, how do you start from from a cell and then uh, something from scratch to the final design? What does that process look like? So. Um, I have, ahead, a, I have a notepad right here yeah. where, it, where it kind of starts, actually. Oh, you so you map um, it out on paper. Sometimes. What I what I personally tend to do, and you know, there's no universal uh system, of course, but uh I'll start with I guess kind of depending on my mood almost, either sort of the big set piece of the dungeon that I want to do, either like you know, a boss room or the entrance hall or the um some hub area maybe it's totally boss sort of, room dude boss and uh just sort of like build it out from there and then just sort of i'll iterate through it i'll play through it myself dozens of times just getting the sort of the layout just the bare bones skeleton uh set and done like a big milestone for me is when i can no longer fall outside of the world and die in the void it's a, it's a big step. I know. I feel safe. It's a key. Don't we all? <laughs> well, uh, you, yeah. don't, you don't die. You just embrace Sithis by going into the void. Tomato. <laughs> eternal void. Um, but yeah, and then uh, then a pass to sort of uh, to clutter it. You know, add the little things that you just sort of walk past without thinking about it. Spider webs, uh, crates and barrels and chests and things rubble just random little rubble on the ground has to be hand placed um and then enemies and then i send it over to qa to scream at it for a little while and lighting don't forget all oh, right i have to do that too <laughs> <laughs> i have a rather different process from you see i'm coming from my archaeology background i like to think first about the space that what i'm building in habits so i often start with the exterior space uh, Molag Mar, the exterior was done already when I was handed over the interior. So I tried to make an interior space and I've already mapped up all the inside rooms as well by the time I started doing um, that grand space. Try to figure out how is it constructed? Would this actually stand up? What sorts of materials are they putting in? Would you even have a huge clay wall like that? Or is it going to have to be broken up by some timbers to try to get some of that like material realism into the architecture? Um, and then also thinking about would they really make a room where you have, or a, you know, a tomb, for instance, we have a lot of tombs in Vardenfell where in order to go pray to your ancestors or make an offering, you have to walk all the way around this way, that 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 way. Uh, and I like to think a little more to make spaces livable. Although I think, yeah, there, there's a little bit of a trade-off where you have to balance between, is this a realistic space and is this a fun space to play? Um, and then, yeah, after that, coming back to those objects of everyday life, like placing, oh, well, 
they would have been carrying this and then they wouldn't have wanted to get mud all over the floor. So they probably left it over here and just kind of thinking through how people are living in these spaces to put the objects in. As far as um, getting involved with, with art design, um, as far as doing anything from, um, you know, level layout to, to take part in the two dimensional team, um, what, what skills did you all bring to the table or what skills do you look for people that want to help out with the project? I guess that's somewhere I can jump in, I guess. Uh, seeing as like I'm one of probably two right now people that manage the whole 3D team, I go through lots of applications, um, especially after this video. We got something like five, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a lot. Like it's it's almost like a job application, right? You kind of have to go through their portfolio and look at everything. Um, things that I value are things like organization, uh, communication. It's a volunteer project, so it, I can understand like a lot of that can be hard to come by, especially because you know you're not paid for it. And you're you're not. There's no expectation, right? Uh, the the team is very differently structured from you know a professional setting, in that you're just not paid. Uh, you're not like given deadlines or anything. So yeah, it it might carry over to voice acting too. Uh, I know the voice acting leads have been kind of putting out soft deadlines and i've tried to also uh do that within the 3d team um, but something i look for in applications immediately is can you communicate effectively um are you organized enough uh, skill i mean is one thing you, you kind of have to be good at what you're doing we set a pretty high bar which is pretty scary for a lot of skill, people passion and organization seem to be pretty high on the list exactly yeah it almost comes down to uh, that silly saying where um what is it if if you're looking for a job pick pick two of these three things right and it, it it's it, it's either good pay a really fun job or you know a good location or or something like that you you kind of have to look at it that way for a lot well, of applications at first yeah but i also look at it in in this way my son through his early years of uh, you know going from middle school to high school was not necessarily a school guy. What he wanted to do was draw. What he wanted to do was anime. But he got great grades all along the way, and he was not working for pay. But what happened was he ended up getting a scholarship on top of his uh, scholarship for the talent that he had because of the work that he had put in. And that meant that all that time that he was doing that stuff, he was being paid. When you do this kind of work, you're not getting paid right now, but what you're doing is you're paying into your future. You're paying into your future, especially, and you'll find this, I think, with any kind of a volunteer basis or things of this sort, whether it be the, the, the development, whether it be the creation, whether it be the voicing, you're going to find people who think it's a really cool, fun idea at first, and then realize just how much work is involved with it and slough off. And you end up getting the ones who really believe, who are doing this because they have it in their heart and they love it and would do it for free, but eventually will not. Because the fact of the matter is you're going to work that hard. You're going to put that passion in. You're going to do that work and people are going to see it. And because of these mods and because they're pro high profile and because the people at the companies do see these things, you're putting yourself in a position where your stuff will be seen. So think of it, I think of it as like what my son did for years to get himself seen and get the scholarship that moves him on to finally get the work that he wants down the road. Yeah. Because in, I was going to add, um, we as voice actors don't have obviously the we don't get to see um the auditions come in and we, we aren't involved in the selection process but what we are involved in is the advice process we are always encouraged to within the auditorium over on discord we're always encouraged to listen to other people's auditions from the public come in and give criticism and give maybe for pointers on different bits and pieces here there and everywhere and as voice actors this sort of industry is a sort of it's a grind it is a we're all in this together sort of thing so if we can help each other that's a key um i say quality that voice actors 
we all want to help and we all want to do make great stuff for this so if you have that passion like you said Wes then that's really that's 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 great um but one thing I would also advise as someone who also I helped a couple of, I think I actually helped one of your students Wes uh, yeah. get into um voice acting as well um Good uh, on Miss, you. Mr Mr Dash um he came to me and asked um I have no idea what Skywin want I would like to a voice for Dunma and I gave him all of sort of like the the phonetic alphabet and how the Dunma say certain vowels which is and sort of a bit of sort of stuff behind the voice a couple of techniques and just being able to share that and he took the advice on board and he made it through so it's we're all help we want to help you put your best foot forward for this because we want this to be as good as we know that everyone else wants it to be so if yeah. everyone is as passionate then that just makes the whole thing greater Renara, I think you bring up a really good point, uh, something that's just really special about the Skywind team is how much we're all invested in each other yeah. and in helping each other and helping each other develop in our own skills. We're yeah. all doing this as a volunteer. Um, so I came to the team with some level design skills and I've learned some about coding. I've learned some about writing. Um, I know there are other people who join as nav mesh and then learn level design along the way. So if you, you know, if you wanted to be a part of the project and you're not sure you have the skills yet, it's still worth applying to do one of these more accessible things like file cutting or nav meshing, because it's an excellent place where you can be fostered to learn in this yeah. environment yeah and that's, that's what... it you doing doing by yeah. doing it is the best experience the best thing experience and you know the, yeah. the thing with with projects like this um and the modding community it's it's vast and huge and it takes so much time and effort to to really see it from start to finish what with that process you know you, you all are, are committed to this as a real passion project you're not being paid for this on the off side on the opposite side of it what are some of the freedoms that that you feel um that unpaid projects give you that maybe a paid project or or maybe doing it for a living would uh, maybe limit you a little bit you mean like spending 250 hours in a single tomb <laughs> <laughs> I would say on the voice acting side, there's a there's definitely a level of more freedom to experiment, I think. And there's that there's not that added weight on you of right, I'm uh, like I'm paying you this much, you better be good, sort of thing. There, there is a when when money's involved, there is a higher expectation between client and voice talent. And for those maybe just starting out, free free stuff and modding the community is so great for you to experiment for you to build your skill set to really have fun with it and find your niche and your the way you work to build up to then making it as a professional voice actor and i could i consider myself a professional voice actor i've been doing it for seven years now and it's the thing of i start this skywind was the first thing i ever got was the first thing i ever got and it will always hold a special place in my heart because I couldn't read when I was younger. I couldn't read at all. Oh, oh well. I, I, when I, I, I struggled so much until I was about 17. And since then, going through this, it's just, I've learned, it's improved my skills. You learn so much by doing these things. You change as a person and that helps my acting and i can't say for everybody else on this project but we've all we all have a path we all have a story we've all gone through this in different ways and i think we're all slightly changed for it really mm. uh, well uh, well for me uh well i i have the issue of well, mm, well i really want people to know my skill set and such I literally got myself out. I've been trying doing voice acting for about 10 years. Most of it's just fan projects, but, uh, but it does at times feel like I've gotten nowhere, but at the same time I gained enough knowledge so I can teach others and actually help guide. I became a bit of a stickler when it comes to qual uh, making sure I have good quality, which is why I actually have high, uh, high quality headphones. So I could pick, put, pick up on a lot of those micro details so I can, mm -hmm. uh, so I can guide people through and, uh, and give proper, proper measurements for me personally. 
I <clears throat> I like to interact with the person I'm doing work with because it, it gives me a sense of drive and motivation. However, whenever I don't get, when I don't have someone I work alongside with to help guide me and such, I just feel like, uh, eh. and this is also, a, this also attributes to uh, something that we all call codependency. <laughs> Yeah, it's not pretty. Nah. So, um, but but I ha- but a lot of times you gotta bite the bullet, even though no one's there to guide you or give you the motivated emotional push to get you to do what you love to do. Yeah, but that's a personal weakness for me. As I also, I think oh, go ahead. A major strength of us being a volunteer project is the fact that we are given greater freedom to explore this world and to explore the elements within it that made it so compelling an experience 21 years ago. We are able to take things like some of the original design ideas that the team at Bethesda had and was unable to implement because of the technology at the time and actually explore those in a modern development context. We're also able to do things like add voice acting to the entire game when it was originally primarily text-based and these kinds of things really update it for a new generation of players to be able to really experience Morrowind and this universe in an entirely new and different way speaking of uh, oh go ahead (laughs) okay Uh, I think for me the difference between paid work and unpaid work is time you don't get paid but you get time and uh you know there's no particular deadline for a voice actor to get a role finished so that gives you as you say the freedom to really go very deep on a character if you want to without i mean i've had paying clients where they said could you turn this round tonight for me please and i'm like what <laughs> okay <laughs> but um yeah it's it's gonna suck and all that but uh, okay i'll do it with this it's kind of you know that is true liberation when there's no particular deadline to get it done yeah you never tell them it's going to suck. You say yes. It'll be brilliant. <laughs> Less good. <laughs> so uh, we have some people in chat, by the way, Ken, who are asking yeah. about if they could talk about gonna... the writing of this project. Yeah. Yeah. Before we did, though, I think, uh, sorry, I think Anna had something they wanted to say and Kate mm. also wanted to say something. Oh, it's just that um, Matt really touched on basically what I was kind of aiming at. You know, he's kind of my boss. So I work in the writing department of things. And one of the best, most freeing things about the fact that it's not a professional project is we do just get that liberty to really experiment with things and put as much passion as we want into it without really feeling constrained by the idea of, I mean, I know that as a writer, sometimes I take what lore we have and I kind of, you know, I add my own little twist to it and I feel more free to be able to do that with the main intention of creating characters and creating an experience that is but one accessible to players and two just very interactive and makes it feel like a real breathing world and yeah so basically just adding on to what matt said and kate yeah i was just going to kind of add on to the freedom but like the freedom to make mistakes that i feel like less pressure and i Mm. think that makes me a stronger actor because i i've I've had a lot of paid work before and you there's this like anxiety about it almost and so there's this like i feel like i'm i don't know i'm like stepping into something really new and also i love like the the clues it or the studio like whatever the word was because like that's literally what i've made is like the that cludio. blanket the, yeah, the the blanket over my my cludio the and they've just been more patient with me as i've been like learning how to get rid of the reverb and like i just feel like if it was a paid project like yeah you're on a strict timeline and they've just been really patient and supportive and giving me tips and hacks and everything so it's just been yeah like a really positive environment and i've feel free to make mistakes, which is really helpful. I think Liz needs to copyright Cludio before it's too late. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quick Liz. Clue, clue, Cludio. <laughs> We're going to see a, a new like series of sound you know, I got to just say, I got to do a shout out for getting paid. Please yeah. don't think it's a terrible thing. It's a oh. wonderful thing. It's a oh, I love getting paid. <laughs> yeah, I love getting paid. Too, yeah. Paid well. Okay. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. It, it it you you can educate your children you can buy a house you can drive a nice car you can 
give money to things like Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that you all are volunteer. I think it's wonderful. I would have, I would have become um, a nurse because I, I could have done it without being paid. I, I can't even imagine what you, you know, the dedication that you have. I think it's wonderful. Mm. But on the other hand, I don't want you to not being paid because it sure as hell feels really good when you get those big fat checks. <laughs> Sometimes I think about what I would have been paid for all the work I've done for Skywind uh, just to yeah. drive me insane. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So Liz, Liz I, I wanted to show you my, my Cludio. Oh, I love it. Oh, my God. Oh, I love oh. it. That, <laughs> look Amazing. at David's Cludio. I think found you. Hashtag, is a, hashtag that, Cludio. That is, a, that is a horrible sentence. Look at David's Cludio. <laughs> I, I don't think I'll ever be able to get that out of my brain. I'm getting shots for why, it. Why, why else do you think I was cringing whenever someone said that word? It's sound I, really I think it should be sung by word. Phil. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly <laughs> spacious and well lit. Oh, God. David, that why? <laughs> Clu -clu Cludio. <laughs> All right, What's so we've, we've, had, we've had a, we've had a yeah, number of uh, we've had a number of questions in chat asking about the writing process. So yes. as far as you know, you've you've decided to to not just completely recreate this game, but also in some instances to really update it and modernize it. Um, as far as the writing process goes, how did that look? Did you go back and dig into like the old text dialogue from the old games as a starting point? Or did you kind of get the flavor of that and then write on top of that? What did that writing process look like? So the uh, I, I finally ditched the ordinator helmet so that my <laughs> audio can hopefully come through more clearly now. Ah. Um, but uh, the, the main thing was that we went ahead and got all of the text that we had in the vanilla game. And then we got all of that pulled in to the uh, Skywind sheets and everything that we were going to work on. Uh, then we're going through the first thing is looking for any kind of errata. Uh, so if you're looking at the original game where something is saying, oh, you need to go west, you know, OK, is that the correct direction? Because there were mistakes in the original game. Um, and then also contextualizing things uh, within that world. So if, for example, somebody is telling you that uh, their wife has been kidnapped by bandits, uh, you would presumably know where you just were when your wife was kidnapped. So you could give precise directions to that location versus if you're sharing a rumor from somebody in town who is saying like, Oh yeah, I heard there's some Daedric worshipers up at a shrine down the road. They may not be able to give you very precise directions. Uh, so contextualize, contextualizing that within that world makes um, everything feel a lot more believable. Um, and then, as mentioned earlier, also, we're going through and taking these giant blocks of text that were just text in Morrowind and chunking them up so that they can work as dialogue with voice acting so that you have the player character reacting periodically, being able to move the conversation forward, and that the NPCs aren't just standing there monologuing at you like I've been doing for the last two minutes. Yeah, Alex Kane in chat uh, had a note here. There's a lot of awkward repetition in the original text-only dialogue because of the keyword system. So a lot of the vanilla rewrites involved making the dialogue flow more naturally, for sure. Yes, absolutely. Um, it, that and also just making sure that you have, you know, we've got, as has been mentioned, something like 300 voice actors. Um, and really trying to take advantage of that so that uh, people's reactions and information that they share with you is more sensible to what you would expect in this kind of fantasy world. Um, a great example of how the keyword system fails is uh, if you want to find out what people do for a living. Um, in Morrowind, you would go up to somebody and I'd be like, hey, Zix, occupation. <laughs> and that's weird. If I did that, Zix would be like, I, uh, what, what are you even asking me? Yeah, I'm but instead, if you're like, these. hey, Zix, what do you do for a living? You know, then then you actually get that interaction with the character and it feels just a little more like a real world that you're living in. Can I ask this group a question? Who mm. are the decision makers? What's the hierarchy of decisions That's being made? And who has the final say? Uh, it's a relatively democratic process. Um, so we have team leads. So there are 3D team leads. There are 2D team leads, voice acting leads. Um, I'm a writing lead. Uh, so generally, the leads kind of act as a council to decide things kind of as a group. Um, it 
usually does not come down to an all in out vote. Um, it's usually just kind of we have discussions and try to figure things out, um, which going back to an earlier point about the freedom we have being a volunteer project, um, not being beholden to shareholders or um, a price point or a release date, we are able to really talk things through and say, okay, like, yeah, maybe nuking this quest and, you know, starting this a different way is going to actually tell this story better. And being able to make that decision as a team and seeing what everybody's impact on that is going to be, you know, are we going to be losing 3D assets that were designed for this quest if we change how this part of it's going to play out? Um, so we all have those conversations together as a team, um, all of the leads do, but also all the team members have input. Um, if there's something that we write and the voice actor gets to it and is like, this is garbage. Like, I don't want to say this. Like, I don't want to record this. Who wrote this? Uh, you there's know, and it, this. yeah. And it comes back to us and we're like, Hey, yeah, this is, uh, we, we need to go have a talk with that writer, but also, yes, let's get you a better line. Um, you See know. a volunteer can say that us paid people have to say, I have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, one of the yeah going back to uh, with with the original uh, game as far as um, that process went, do you remember Liz and uh, David? I think we lost uh, Wes here for a moment. Oh, he's trying to get back in. Uh, I should have looked to my left. Wes is coming back in. There we go. There we go. Wes oh. looks Wes looks annoyed. Oh no! <laughs> the names are oh, Wes, no. did you lose power again? Oh no! no computer crapped out. That, that's oh just... no! Oh. No! You still is, got some power, though. I'll tell you enough. <laughs> yeah, the question uh, I just asked—we were talking about the writing process for the game, Wes, um, yeah. and how the 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 team here, as far as the voice actors go, can can kick some lines back. As far as that original game back with uh, Morrowind, as far as the writing process to voice delivery, were were you able to make some notes on characters, maybe take a character in a different direction, say a line a different way, or make suggestions like that? Well, I mean, we discussed it with Todd. It was all a very yeah. interesting thing in the studio, but it was all done right there in the studio. It was done real time. It's not like in many video game uh, sessions, you're not getting the script ahead of time. We never got the script until we sat down in front of the, uh, the this, this big binder with all these pages in absolute pitch. So in that situation, uh, we're like, Todd, who are these people? What are they like? What do we do? What do you want from us? Uh, what is the emotion here? We can talk to him about all these different things. And then we try to give that to him. So he's kind of uh, leading the blind in that instance. We don't know what we're looking at until um, until we're actually reading. And sometimes you're discovering your character even as you're reading your character. You're discovering as you continue along. Uh, and that is with the help of the uh, uh, the director there uh, or the engineer, whoever is there with you. It becomes a very collaborative experience. Um, I have had a chance where they've given me the script ahead of time. A lot of that's been happening recently, but uh, that's because they have to send it to you in your home studio. Um, as opposed to you showing up out at either Bethesda or uh, game studios or going to a studio somewhere where they're going to work with you. You can do it at your home. So they have to send it to you and you get it a day or so in advance. Uh, still. And yet there can always be surprises. Always you know, be- I, I think too, that it wasn't, I'm hearing so much collaboration that you guys have before you have the final product. The collaboration for us was done really before we got into the studio, Right. You know, the designers and the music and the, and the, um, you know, all the technical decisions were made prior to us getting in. So, um, voice actor asked the thing you, that get done. Yeah. It, it was, act- go ahead. What were you going to say? Yeah. You're, Liz, you're right. Voice acting is the last thing they apply. Everything else is pretty much ready before we go in. Yeah. Yeah. And there wasn't, there wasn't like changes, a lot of changes in the script at all. You know, I don't remember, maybe maybe with Mark or Todd every once in a while, but basically the script was set. Mm-hmm. And we went from one emotion, I think Wes said that too, we went from one emotion to another quite rapidly, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And and then there was always, I, I can't remember, we didn't we didn't slate the, the takes, did we? No. I can't remember. One to the next and uh, 
Chip, uh, our engineer, was Chip marking. You marked it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't quite remember, you know, back that far. But um, it was a very different process than what you're you're talking about for your mod. Very different. And yeah, see, for me, uh, for Morrowind, voicing a great many different characters who all had small roles, it becomes more technical. Now I'm making sure that they don't sound like each other. Now that I'm yeah. I'm trying my best to make sure that I'm presenting what that part of the plot has to be pushed. I mean, I've done larger roles for a couple of the Star Trek games and some other things, but there's always an interesting challenge for the smaller roles when there's a lot of them. Yeah. And it really becomes more yes. of a technical situation to make sure that you're creating a number of different characters mm. And and the players aren't going, well, wait a minute, wasn't he the guy who went, uh, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And we do have something similar in that, in that I, I, when we all start out with one um, race, per se, wh whichever one we usually cast for. But then sometimes the VA leads will go, right, we need people to voice perhaps um, our, like Argonian or an Imperial or they will sort of approach us. And but they have to ask us, okay, so what were your characters? We need to make sure that you're not voicing somebody so close to your other race. So they ha they do actually take that into account, is what I was going to say. We do have that. Um, mm. with, they do make that, make sure that if you are going to go for something else, that they're going to try and make those two races or those two characters as far away as possible. Mm. Well, and it also, feels, um, it feels to me of... that. Oh, you can go. Okay, it feels to me that the more roles you have to play in a project, the the sort of the ground shrinks beneath you creatively, and you have yeah. to sort you of you almost going. well. But here's the deal: you have to have a really good grasp of what your range is, mm -hmm. so yes. that you know what you're offering the writers and the director. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can almost make a list: older, younger, higher pitch, lower pitch, gruffer, yeah. softer, whisper. Yeah. You know, you can almost write that out and put it in front of you for reference before you go in. Yes. And I always put the placement of the voice too for a character. It would be where You're is right. it coming from. Yes. Right. Mean, that, that's a big one for me to do. Well, and this is where I think our voice actors and our team, especially um, with our voice acting leads, really are so phenomenal because they are able to hear the voices that these actors are able to produce and really find, you know, what is a good role. When, you know, even just during the audition process where they hear somebody and they're like, oh, this person would be great for such and such. Um, and I think that that is one of the strengths that we have with having such a diverse and wide team is that it is able to give us so many different voices to pull from. Um, and really one of the things that, you know, as somebody who's been in the gaming scene for such a long time and has played so many different mods, which, you know, Bethesda is so famous for you know, having such open-ended modifications. Um, so often you get the feeling that this is a mod when you hear the voices. Um, they sound like they were recorded in a bathroom in a subway station in New York somewhere. Um, and it's just, it's very, very clear that it's not professional. And we have such exacting audio requirements of our actors, of the way that the file cutters cut the lines, of where the pauses are, of how it syncs up with the animations. Uh, that, you know, as you saw in the gameplay video, which if you watch it on our YouTube channel with sound and everything, it's so phenomenally good. Um, and, you know, I, I don't brag, but like it's our voice actors have done such a great job. Our animators have gotten everything synced up just so well. Um, and and it really brings that to life and makes it look professional. It looks triple A. Um, and that's only possible because of this team. Yeah, modding, uh, just like video games and the voice acting industry, modding has come a long way from where it started. I mean, like even back in Oblivion and Morrowind. So now the way people run things, especially with finding talent, connecting with each other, it's almost like there's this internet mod creation voice acting networking that goes on that never really was a thing 10 15 years ago so now the expectations what people look for what they want to find is much higher than it used to be so there people are ready now to kind of set the groundwork for creating what they want to create and what talent they want to find they already have connections they can draw from yeah. well you're belong to us <laughs> <laughs> the Borg will assimilate you. 
Yeah, going back to, to what Matt was talking about, your your acceptance rate as far as the casting all club is less mm. than 5%. Um, what are some of the reasons, aside from, you know, sounding like you're recording in a, in a bathroom stall, you have a passion for voice acting, but not the, quite the equipment or setup for it. Um, what are some of the reasons aside from that that people are rejected? I think that a lot of the recordings just sound very awkward that the people speaking have no self-confidence in themselves and they're kind of just having a go and not taking it seriously. Hoping. Yeah. Yeah. Hoping, having to punt and like you say, top 5%, hundreds of auditions, only about 50 of them are going to get in, in any one batch. So you've got to start taking it seriously. And I think, yeah. as you say, acting out of a toilet is not acceptable, <laughs> you know, well, there goes my. Yeah, no, our uh, our, yeah, Wes. our VA lead actually just just said in our in our little chat uh, that it's mostly sound quality, and it, it is um, because mm. you know, like this, this is not the headset for voice acting. Right. Um, you know, you really need to have actual professional equipment. Um, yeah. But then, you know, as Ryan was saying, it also comes down to how you act and how your voice is trained. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about the Dunmer rasp. And so there's, you know, kind of a specific throat technique that goes into that because, yeah, if you do it for a long time, it's going to start wearing on your throat. But if you're doing it wrong, it wears on your throat right away. Um, mm. And our team can recognize that. They can say, you know, you're not holding your throat in the correct technique. And here's some YouTube videos that are going to guide you kind of on how to do that because um, it's very similar to Mongolian throat singing. Um, and you need to be able to really nail that to be able to take on that kind of voice, which if you're the kind of person that can't, then cool. We have other roles that you might be able to take on. Um, but if you're also the kind of person that can't take direction and is going to try to insist that the way you're doing it is the best way, even though we can tell that you're tearing your throat up, um, then we're not going to take you on the team because you have to be able to work collaboratively with everybody else on the team because we I'll want this to be the best it can be. The, the greatest lesson I learned coming from the theater, going into the electronic media, sitting behind a microphone with a piece of paper in my hand was when somebody said to me, who are you talking to? Mm -hmm. well, I was talking to the paper. Right. Yeah. And, and finally yeah. figuring out that I'm talking to someone is the, is the greatest lesson that a, a, a starting out voiceover person can use. Yeah. And it's a lesson as a writer and a director yeah. myself that I've shared that with numerous people and it really helps them get to the next level. Acting. I don't yeah. know if I'm, after yeah, you was. I Someone go. Uh, <laughs> I'll go. I'll say I'll go. As, okay. Yeah. Um, no, you go because I've interrupted you a little. <laughs> Uh, works as a critic in the auditorium and tries working with people to get their auditions up to quality so they can be a part of the team. Um, the biggest thing is, you know, of course, the conversationality we've been talking about, making them seem like they're an actual human being you're talking to and not just, you know, pixels on a screen. But another interesting thing is the combat sounds that actually gets a lot of people stopped because we take our combat sounds very seriously in Skywind, yeah. and I hope people appreciate that. You know, when <laughs> someone gets attacked, it's not just like, Ugh. you actually like, feel like a death curdling yeah. scream coming out of yeah. someone, like you've really been stabbed. Yeah. And that goes a lot to, I think, making probably the immersion feel a lot better and just making the battle scenes, you know, more intense and interesting. So I remember well, from you, along you've, the way, basically. <laughs> you've, you've taken my sort of thunder there by saying, the key problem with a lot of these actors is that, that they are self-aware. You've yeah. got to yes. lose yourself completely. That's that's yes. the key thing. Yeah, you can't. You, you know, I mean, you can't. If you're voice acting in a uh, studio in uh, you know some very <laughs> loud place, you, you're not going to be able to lose yourself, and you're not going to be able to scream like you're going to die. You know, you've got to be able to lose yourself. You know. Yeah, I remember Wes, it, I think it was the second night of your class that you do, getting us to to die in dramatic fashion. Well, I do that <laughs> something actually, we practice. That's just like in the sessions, you do the, uh, the effort sounds at the end of a session because those are vocally strenuous. You know the mark of a, uh, of a di vocal director who has you do the, uh, your battle sounds first is not necessarily experienced because you can really uh leave the voice a little bit in shreds but it's true you have to feel the weight of a sword if you're carrying a sword you have to feel the the oomph of a punch there's when you're hitting the solar plexus there's got to be a little bit of a 
you know, there, you really have to get into this. It's just as you have to be mm. just immersed and make it just as real as anything else you do. Mm. You know, going back to, oh, sorry, go ahead. I don't know if anyone is familiar with the, the British TV show Extras with Ricky Gervais. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it's an excuse to get big Hollywood actors in and Ricky Gervais is like a fledgling actor. And he goes up to Ian McKellen and he says, uh, have you got any tips for me? And he's like, young man, you have to pretend to be someone else. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Ricky Gervais is like, yeah, okay, I get that. But, but he's, McKellen, it's played for last, but McKellen is right. You know, that's the key thing. You've got to pretend to not be yourself. You know, you've got to forget about yourself. And, and, and the environment's got a lot to do with that. The voice acting is the product, oh, not yeah. you. You are yes. giving something. So it's ne never, never feel it's a reflection on you as a person. If you can separate yourself from your product, from your character, that safeguards you it mentally for whatever the character is going through. But also, you it gives you that freedom to explore. But it's True. Lot, yeah. It's what I've taught people. So. Bring a part of yourself if you're being absolutely yeah. real. Every role. Yeah. We all. Experiences. Every experience in life will lend itself to something you're going to be doing as a character. And we all have uh, good sides, bad sides, all these things. You've got to be able to explore and, and, and plumb those. Remember, every villain thinks that they are the hero of their own story. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You justify these things and you have to be able to justify that for yourself. That doesn't mean when you're done, you don't go take the hottest shower and try to cleanse that character away for good. But when you're in it, you got to be in it. You yeah. can't just wear a character like it's a jacket you throw on, but inside you're still, you know, that's that's superficial. You've got to become, as far as I'm concerned, you've got to really allow yourself to feel and be and breathe and live as that character in that moment if you want to make it real. Mm. One, uh... I think uh, there's, there's, there's two types of villains. There's the one you've described, and there's the other villain who is a complete psychopath who knows <laughs> he's a psychopath like, you know, Hannibal Lecter or the Joker. Still feels the, you know, yes. Yeah. Mm. They, they know they're evil. They know they're a, a, an absolute de an absolute degenerate or an absolute monster, but they just love it. I mean, yeah. I, there's, there's a and saying. I'll tell you, a guy's got to eat. <laughs> yeah, espe <laughs> especially, if they eat, especially if they like eating the flesh of his enemies. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and, you know, some one of the things with really accepting with really getting into these characters is you just have to resign yourself to the fact that if someone overhears you doing your combat screams, then there's a good mm. chance they're going to call the police. Cause yeah. I know I've had the experience yeah. where I've been yeah. recording at home and then, you know, my mother came in, um, early and I wasn't expecting her and she just rushes and it's like, what is going on? You know, what is happening? And I saw the panic in her eyes, like kind of confusion of what's happening. And in that moment, I felt very vindicated that I was able to kind of induce that reaction in her in that sort of way. That's so, very rewarding. You know, <laughs> you haven't seen a mom or a cat, you haven't done a good job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quick, quick roundup here. So we've had uh, donations coming in. So anonymous twenty dollar donation on the path to Chim. Thank you very much. Uh, a five dollar donation from Peta. We know. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Ryan Badman. Thank you for the ten dollar donation. Isabella Summit for twenty, uh, and another don anonymous donation for twenty. So we're now at five thousand four hundred eighty-two dollars and twenty-two cents. Extremely well done. And. Uh, We've, we're running out of time here. So I did have one last question, which, you know, is something that uh, we can get back into talking about uh, that was mentioned earlier. When it comes to, to voice acting, you can hear when someone doesn't believe in themselves or believe in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. how, how can they get past that anxiety or that imposter syndrome and be able to step outside themselves to even be somebody else? What what advice, you know, from from Wes, Liz or Dave and, and really any of you, what, what would you give? Well, Wes. we're we're dealing with a technology where you can hear yourself back. Yeah. So yeah. the two things that really help are practice and actually being able to listen to your performance. And if you practice enough and you listen enough and you're critical enough and really realistically critical enough, you'll just proceed to get better. 
And it's like, mm. I can't remember who was talking about, you know, actors who can't take direction. Well, they're going to be tough to deal with because if you can't take direction, you're not going to be able to criticize yourself and improve mm. yourself. But practice and really listening to yourself are two really good starts in getting better. You're training your ear as well as your voice. Yep. I, I think also it's really important to um, understand your motivations. You know, then it gets you out of your own way, really. If you go, well, why is my character saying that? You know, how is my character dying? Or, or what, I mean, I've always found that the more that I can get into what the character is about, the less I think about myself doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and yeah. I lose that sense of self. Yeah, I mean, why? Why do does anybody ever open their mouth to say anything? There's yeah. a reason behind you saying these things. You're, you're, in, in fact, there is a whole story there. You're a storyteller. You're not just a reader. You're not sitting down reading a book for somebody at bedtime or anything of that nature. You're not really reading. What you need to do is take those words through yourself, through your own experiences, through the emotion of the moment, and also through the motivation of what does this character want. Those words come into your eyes but have to filter through this to come out. And if you, if, if you think about it as a storyteller, as you think about it as if you are there in that moment as that character it's going to be a lot less stilted a lot less reading a lot more natural now see you've just heard the two different sides of the acting coin <laughs> i work from the outside which is listening to myself which is the technique and liz and to some extent wes come from the inside of the motivation of what makes the character do now if you get a good combination of those two approaches you're probably going to be all right we've got you coming mm -hmm. to go basically yeah. yeah, it was always a when thing it comes that to... um, if go you down. wanted to be sorry, if you wanted to be sorry, go an actor or go and get over your uh, self doubt or your worries, you first have to learn to be okay with criticizing yourself and your own performance, and then you can move on to allowing to take critique from others once you feel safe. Um, mm -hmm. So in the beginning, I started out completely self taught because I didn't know anybody who was interested in acting. There was theater school. Uh, I mean, well, there was theater at my school, but I had a lot of very judgmental, cranky kind of bully guys at my school that if you were in the theater club or anything, you were the nerd, you were the guy that got made fun of. Did you so go was to not... my school? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. He went to all of our schools, okay? Every yeah, school every school. Was... But I always admired them from afar, and I would help out behind the stage, and I was always interested, but primarily I was studying to be an artist. After I got out of school and I was in a place where nobody knew me i was in an apartment in another state that i'd never been in nobody around knew me for miles or anything like i just had nothing but time so i started to record by like reading out of a book and then like hearing my own voice by recording it back using audacity and then saying the different characters in the book trying to do a different voice for each one and remember how i did it uh because i knew audio i like listening to audiobooks and once I got comfortable with that and understanding that I could push myself and I could push that voice, because there were just some voices I wanted to do, but no matter how hard I tried, I could not do it because I didn't have the muscle. I didn't muscle have the strength or the confidence. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually, once I felt comfortable enough with myself and that I felt like I could, I wanted to know if I was any good because I wanted somebody who was talented to tell me, I put, put it on the internet. And there will be people who will give you opinions, whether they're, you know, experienced or not. And once no, you get no used opinion. to hearing the good and no. the bad. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? There are no opinions on the Internet. What are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's how I started. And it, and it eventually, yeah, I started getting worried that people would, you know, come at you. But once you've tried so many characters and you've heard your voice so many times and you've done this over and over again, where you've learned how to use this instrument and how to work with it, you forget about what you sound like and you start trying to make it sound like the character and you're more worried about how different can you make it sound from yourself where you don't even hear yourself anymore, you hear the character. And from then you can just go off with it because you're no longer thinking about yourself. You have to take away the worry and self-preservation about your reputation, all of that out and just focus on what the material is. And yeah. once you've gotten to that mentally you're good sorry go ahead. here's what i respect about you daniel what i respect yeah. about you, 
you is that I've been listening to you. You started putting this stuff online years ago. And I've listened to you over the years getting better and better, more subtle, more nuanced, more uh, bringing more personality, more emotion into the roles. You've gotten better and better. And the fact of the matter is you never gave up. You keep going. I'm sure as everybody who's doing voice acting, you're going to run into a ton of rejection. You're going to be rejected more times than you're accepted. But you don't let that stop you. You've listened. You've trained your ear, you've learned from what you've heard, and you keep going. If you want to be a voice actor, voice act, whether you're doing it into your phone, whether you're doing it into your computer, whether you're doing it anywhere, whether you're sitting in, in a car and talking to yourself, you continue to do these things. You continue to work your craft. You're going to get paid for it. You keep pushing yourself. Also, look into the different ways, Daniel, that you can market yourself. Other people have done it. Follow their path until your path is your own. The, the, you, you do not give up. And that's the key. You keep going. Mm -hmm. I also think that theater is a wonderful way to um, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of get your, get your juices going. And, um, you know, community theater, or it doesn't matter what, what it is. And, um, but that, I think, is a wonderful way to gain confidence. Because you're, you know, you have to get up in front of people. You've got to develop a character, and you, and it, it's, it's a wonderful learning um, tool. So I, I think I would um, encourage people to do anything that they could in theater. So uh, pertaining to the question, I heard the phrase imposter syndrome. I hate that phrase, imposter <laughs> syndrome. You know, imposter syndrome is just a natural part of being inexperienced at something. Anything, you know, you could be a sports player stepping onto the, the first cup final you played. You feel imposter syndrome. You think, why am I here? You're here because you're good enough to be here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as you get more experience, as you get better chops, that feeling of imposter syndrome will disappear because you're getting more experienced. And I also think like remembering to play, like, like to play with it is also really important. I feel like Wes, you kind of drove that home in the class, like remember mm -hmm. what first made you want to be a voice actor. Like I remember sitting with my little like camcorder, like voice yeah. thing, pretending to be on a radio show or like stuff like that. So like tapping back into that sort of childlike playfulness, which, you know, I did the theater training, I did all that. And it's like, you get to this point sometimes of like being so perfectionistic that you could get two in your head. And then you're like, right. so I don't know. Yeah. Just being more playful. I just think. Right. When we were kids, when we were kids and we would imagine things, we imagined them in such vivid detail. We would go to these worlds in our heads. Like I say, you take the cushions off the couch and throw them on the floor and those are stones and the, and the floor is lava. You believe you'll burn if you jump off those things as a kid. Let the child inside you come alive because this job, that we have is fun it's a lot of hard work and you've got to work to get to the places you want to be but it's still we do it because there's joy and we love it yeah start now Amen. And they, a lot of people kind of get worried about oh i need to have the mic or i need to have the setup and yes that is important but to build that confidence and the experience just start now like mm. but get a book read it out loud if it's just to yourself or somebody else find a usb mic and go on to like go on to some like casting call websites and find things you can audition for start now because if you want to do this there is no time like the present and it took me a long time to realize yeah time flies by i want to do this i'm doing this now and i think once you're in it you go i think everybody deals with with crises of confidence at different parts of our lives yeah. Particularly when you want something so bad and you can't get it as quickly as you want, it's easy to to give in. And there's there's no day that goes by that I don't wish that I had kept writing and acting in the 10 years that I, I vanished into corporate bullshit life. <laughs> don't do it. Don't give up. Keep fighting. Keep whatever. Because every now and then you'll find the thing that becomes your thing in the way that I didn't think that I'd be sitting here with all of you or Wes or anybody else, you know, two years ago before finding this community, this amazing, beautiful, open and loving community. This, this community of gamers are some of the best people that I've ever had the yeah. great pleasure to meet. And considering what we do 
through Fallout for Hope and getting together almost half a million dollars raised for charity, we're not just having fun anymore. It's about making a difference. Mm -hmm. And following your joy at the same time. Yeah. You can follow your joy and make a difference in this world at the same time. And in fact, if by doing what we do, we're able to help people at the same time, I, I don't think there's any better reason to be here on this planet. No. Uh, one last thing. So we had uh, one last shout out. So Raptor uh, 788, thank you very much for the $50 donation. Much love from the Skywind team. Um, so we're going to close uh, on a Shao off. So we've had a request for a uh, impromptu uh, scenario that's going to put Wes. Uh, it's going to put Wes, uh, Daniel, and uh ryan oh what oh, look, at him getting, <laughs> look at him getting ready we're putting <laughs> right going down. Down. this is wes <laughs> wes daniel and ryan as oh. sheo go Rath's, trapped right. at a bus stop having an oh, argument no. with each other <laughs> and, oh. and just want to say i feel like wes has a performance enhancing prop Oh, yeah. literally passed them off the you mean this this <laughs> 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 oh, that's not. Oh, so, okay. Shea Gorath's at the bus stop and go. I don't know how long it's going to take for this bus to arrive. Ah, surely it's not being run by Jingleleg because it's not on time. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, check in Ireland in second reading. Okay. <laughs> Brilliant. No cue cards. No, very <laughs> Go ahead. What's that? Nah, you too. You first. I want to cheese. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I bought my tickets a few days ago. I've been wondering when they're going to get here. <laughs> All I'm I supposed know. to be in Kilkenny two hours ago. <laughs> All I know is that I was in the bathroom just a few minutes ago. There was so much cheese on the floor, and it's all filthy, filthy, filthy cheese. It's oh, a good. dust and cheese I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was bloody silk on it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese on the bathroom floor. Wow. I love floor cheese. Geo, what's your obsession with cheese then, lad? What's wrong with ham? It was one line. It was one line I said about 15 years ago. And no one let me live it down. No. There's cheese everywhere. Everybody wants it all the time. <laughs> Nobody wants my cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody... I know about cheese. I read about it on that bathroom wall. You smelt it from a mile away, boy. <laughs> oh, can you keep it down a bit there, lads? You're making my teeth itch. Uh, you know Sorry, my granny's trying to sleep next door. <laughs> Do you know what else makes your teeth itch? I'll tell you what makes your teeth itch. Those little mints they have there in those white receptacles in the restroom. I love those mints. <laughs> They're fantastic. <laughs> I always try to pop them in everyone every, any time I can. <laughs> I haven't been to a restroom for a year. I've got terrible incontinence, I have. <laughs> oh, the indigestion. I hate the indigestion. Or maybe I don't. You never know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perhaps what we need to do is rip out your bowels. Well, take out your entrails. Skip rope with them. That'll make you all feel right. Once again. <laughs> we can take Squeeze turns. them out like a sausage. <laughs> Which one of us first? <laughs> I'll take a little bit of your entrails. Or maybe some of yours. <laughs> oh, can I have your bladder, please, lad? <laughs> Jesus. Please, can you three get together and just do an entire <laughs> skit? That would be, like, put that into the world. That would be amazing. It'd be absolute madness. It's the Spider-Man oh, meme time. where they're all pointing at each other. <laughs> oh, God, it is. <laughs> um, we, in the show verse. we are now more than out of time. So before we go... Um, <laughs> A couple of things. So uh, Voice of Palooza is going to be going on all month long. Go to falloutforhope.com uh, and click right on Voice of Palooza. Although I think Wes and I have now voiceofpalooza.com. You go there as well. It'll now link you properly. The schedule is up. We have, Wes, some in unbelievable, awe-inspiring talent this year. We have double the people involved uh, as far as voice actors go that are coming out to play with us, including some some really legendary surprising people that we haven't talked about yet uh and, and by the way if anybody is in the uh dmv area around uh, virginia tomorrow we're going to actually be doing uh our 
we're going to be doing a voice of Palooza, mini voice of Palooza with his all bot scripts done by uh, Pete and Patty. And that is going to be done from a place called Toshi Station in Springfield, Virginia, where it's free comic book day. We're going to be there from 10 a.m. till about four. And we're going to go live at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, it's going to be me. Mike Rossin from Fallout, all the uh, ghouls, the gob, and the Colin Moriarty, and John St. John, who is uh, Duke Nukem, Duke is Nukem. going to join us there live. We're all going to be there. We're going to hang out. We'll sign autographs. We're going to do uh, uh, a little mini voice of Palooza for, live from uh, Toshi Station tomorrow. And then we're going to be at Echo State, uh, Echo Base in Centerville on Sunday. Uh, for also free comic book day. So uh, we may be going on and doing a little Q&A uh, on that day as well. So uh, we're, we've are we got so many wonderful events coming up. Uh, there's going to be a radio program mid-month. That's right. A noir program that is uh, being written by uh, Kenneth, along with a little help, maybe from me, not as much, but also Emil Pagliarillo, who wrote the uh, Fallout 4 in the Writers Guild. They're going to have all the writers, a writer's room. They're going to get there with Kenneth, and they're going to put their brains together on another panel. Uh, but the radio program, you're not going to believe the people who are joining us for that one. It's going to be, I will tell you this, you will see the first ever and maybe only team up of the Silver Shroud and mm. Nick Stephen Russell is going to join me and we're going to reprise our roles and it's going to be a full on radio program done live, just like in the old days. So it's Fully either effects and all one thing you have <laughs> or a giant train wreck. Either way, it's going to be entertaining. Uh -huh. You and got the sh silver shroud cap and overcoat or anything like that. Wes has got those. Where? <laughs> <laughs> I will be very disappointed if Wes doesn't wear them on stream that day. <laughs> um liz where can uh, where can people find you and follow you well so right i'm what i'm doing now is i'm writing a series of children's books i've oh, finished awesome. two out of three yes and i'm working with um a, a literary agent manager out of la so i've been pretty busy doing that and then i just finished um just a, a marathon animation that i'm not allowed to talk about but it was pesky ndas good on you yeah out of canada it was just it was wonderful that's awesome good on you eh oh. <laughs> and david uh what have you been up to what are you doing that's exciting where can people follow you uh i'm not doing too much exciting but uh, at least i get to live in my little voice booth a lot uh, i do a lot of book <laughs> narrations uh i uh, uh i do a lot of corporate uh, training. I coach executives. I help them write their speeches. I help their presentation skills. Uh, I'm writing and directing a bunch of corporate training films and medical videos and things like that. So I don't get, you know, unless the movies come to town and I'm lucky enough to grab a, a day player or two, something like that. Yeah, you can find me on Facebook. Look at David Dubois. You'll see some of the things I'm doing. My website's daviddubois.com which needs to be updated. I think I still have hair on it. I'm not sure. <laughs> you, do, you do, but it's very nice, David. Thank you. Thank you. I still nice. have it. It's in a box in the back room. I can put it on anytime I need it. Every Christmas time, you have a, a massive outbreak of crabs. Uh, yes, you should oh, quote the expression. Um, I wrote a song 40 what? years ago called Crabs for Christmas. Oh, no. And I, oh, yes. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and it's been a perennial musical hit. So I do concerts around Christmas time. I just wrote a book. Uh, well, it's I can't find it right yeah. now. But uh, I just wrote a book, published it last year, and it did very well. It's called I Gave Baltimore Crabs for Christmas. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's a minute. I'm but noticing a little thing. bit of a trend here, David. <laughs> How exactly were the crabs? What exactly is going on in that Cludio? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> if you have to ask i can't tell you i'm very sorry 
Uh, but thanks for inviting me to this, guys. This has been great. It's very nice to get to meet you all. And yeah. thanks yeah. to all the folks who are actually sending in money to the organization. It's it's just been a wonderful day. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're now yeah. at uh, $5,537.22. Right. And uh, Team Skywind, big round of applause. Big round of applause in chat from all of the, the amazing, incredible, really uh, ongoing forever work that you all are doing, <laughs> chipping away at this really awesome. awesome um as far as where people can can stay in touch with you and also if they want to get involved in, in either design 2d 3d design or uh, voice acting uh where do they go and what do they do so our site is t-e-s-r skywind.com um that's for the elder scrolls renewal project uh which Skywind and Sky Oblivion are part of. Uh, you can volunteer there. Uh, we do most everything through our Discord, so that's a great way to interact with the community, find out how to get involved. Um, if you don't think you have applicable skills, you do. You can learn to be a file cutter. We have a connection to the Arcane University, so we're always mm -hmm. happy to help people learn how to They're get involved fantastic. with the creation kit and things yep. like that. Um, so yeah, that's the best way. Uh, check out our discord, come to our site, uh, put in an application and we'd love to meet you. Awesome. Well, we are, uh, out of time. So, uh, hold tight here. We're going to, uh, switch over to the ending stream. And then if you can hang on, because we're going to pass the party on to someone else who's currently streaming right now, uh, who's going to be doing some fundraising through, uh, Elder Scrolls online, uh, and who's been raising quite a bit for us. So please stick around, uh, drop raids in chat when we switch over. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you all very much for joining us tonight. And uh, this is just the very thank beginning you, of a beautiful month of uh, of doing some good for, for people that we love and lost. Yeah, thank you so much yeah. for this opportunity. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank all. you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Ciao, ciao.